the, the mere fact that you accepted to keep the, that, 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 that kid and you don't abort? The low number of women using contraceptives in Uganda has prompted former Vice President Dr. Spesio Zakaziwe to urge families on the use of family planning methods. The number of people who are born, a country cannot plan effectively if the rate of growth or the rate at which we produce children is out of step with how we can look after them as a country. Dr. Spesio Zakaziwe is currently serving as a presidential advisor on microfinance. She advocates for sensitization on family planning so that families can have the number of children that can fit in their economic capacity. The challenge is on us who are into well-being and getting a population that Uganda can support to put in more effort and to ensure that we educate the population which includes also going to schools, which includes getting mothers, really these women councils, that's part of the job they should also be doing. The, the ROCs, keeping girls in school, the women councils, the youth councils, each of us has a village we live on. What is the role? There should be a meeting every month. If uh, the, there is no way you can run out of topics, 12 times in a year for the youth council to meet, a, a village youth council, a women council, or an ROC council to meet and talk about issues that affect the well-being of, of the village which you lead. Contraceptive use among sexually active unmarried women stands at 44% while married women's use of modern contraceptives stands at 26%. According to the 2011 Uganda Demographic and Health Survey, more than 4 in 10 births are unplanned, with contraceptive use still very low. Uganda has one of the highest fertility in sub-Saharan Africa, with women giving birth on average to more than 6 children. Kaziwe urges that poor women are unable to make informed decisions on family planning, since they lack exposure and income to access family planning methods have a man and woman, they get married, you expect them to have children, which is a blessing. But that blessing can turn into a nightmare because right now, because the economy, the means of production are changing, because we are basically now having a population which is uh, peasantry or they are just producing for food. The policies of government are not running you know, fast enough to catch up with an economy which helps people who can't help themselves. So when you get more people born than the numbers that pay taxes, then you get that mis misfit, you end up with a population which is jobless, like we see now, you end up with a population who, which is weighted so badly by the number of children at family level, that nutrition is a problem, support to education is a, pro a problem, housing is a problem, all factors that are essential for the well-being of any person. Uganda's population currently stands at 42.86 million people with the poorest regions, such as Busoga having the highest birth rates. In the census, Busoga has the highest fertility rate for many other reasons. I think it is the potatoes and the yams and the cassava that we eat over there. But you find that uh, these women in the census in Usoga have the, the biggest number of children per, per woman, which is six. So that family will have 24 children, four wives, that is 20, 28, plus the man, that is 29 people. If that man earns only, let's say, one million per month, divided, by, by 29 people, that is the per capita per person in that household. Compare it with a place like Nyavshozi, where they, they, they don't have uh, much polygamy. One man, one woman, and the only four children. So you divide that one million over six people. So where is the poverty? The poverty is in Busoga, but it's poverty density. She advised government on a policy on family planning, which keeps children in schools with emphasis on girl-child education or keeping girls in school 
as well as having free education up to secondary level to delay the many challenges faced by the girl child. No girl should drop out of school. No girl should stop in P7. No girl should stop in O level. After O level, she, she must get a skill free of charge at every level so that we do get mothers who are informed and delay the age at, at which they start giving birth. That is the most important national contraceptive for this country. Family planning methods control the number of children one has and the intervals between birth. Contraception methods include pills, implants, injections, condoms, vasectomy, and tubal ligation. Dr. Specio Zakazwe advises women on using intrauterine device as the preferred birth control method. Intrauterine device is a long-acting reversible contraception. The implant lasts from three to five years in a woman's reproductive organ. As I speak now, the, the coil, the copper coil, which is not laced with the hormones, like the pill hormones, is the best, even if you have not actually got a child before. Because once you start menstruating, your cervix is opening every month. So already there is an established path through which a doctor can pass this coil and put it in your uterus. Then when you are ready, you go and take it out and get your child as you wish. She also called for more sensitization to be done to the public following the myths surrounding birth control methods. So the challenge is on us who are into well-being and getting a population that Uganda can support to put in more effort and to ensure that we educate the population. Currently, millions of women and families around the world are embracing various methods of family planning to better cater for their families.